Hi, my name is Joe, and welcome to another edition of Joe's Technology. Today we're looking at how to dual boot uh, Linux with Windows 7. In particular, we're going to uh, demonstrate using Linux Mint. However, with our uh, previous demonstration, we did it by splitting the partition and having one partition for Windows and one partition for uh, Linux Mint. And in this case, we're going to be doing it using a loopback device. Now, uh, in Unix-like operating systems, loopback denies, uh, you know, Vino Dis, Lofi, uh, which is a loopback file interface, uh, is a pseudo device. It, it's not an actual physical device. It just kind of exists within the computer's memory, and it can make a file accessible as a block device, you know, kind of like a, the way a hard drive store data. So we could take the entire operating system of Linux and put it onto a Windows file system as one big file. And when Linux boots, it reads that file as if it's reading an entire file system. So we don't have to change the partitions and upset windows or, or do anything else. Uh, and we just have this little file here. All right, let me go ahead and look. I should have my uh, CD here around here someplace. Sorry, I just have to find my, uh, my Linux disk uh, for this. Uh, here we go. We'll go ahead and we'll use uh, Linux Mint 15, 64-bit, uh, with the uh, Mate desktop. Now that I've stuck the uh, disk in, as you can see, uh, Windows uh, Autoplay is turned on on this computer, so it immediately sees it, and the Auto Run kicks this off and offers to uh, run uh, Linux Mint uh, for Windows. So I'll go ahead and say yes, and the installer begins, and here it's uh, install inside Windows. And it even tells us, you know, hey, don't worry, we're, we're not going to use a dedicated partition. Uh, let's see, it recognizes that I am logged in with the username Joe. And so it offers to make my administrative account the same thing. And, uh, but you could, well, you know what, just for our, our test, I'll go ahead and I'll change it. So you, you, can, you can put whatever username you want. Okay, and so it shows uh, the installed device it's going to, my default language, which in this case is English, United States, how much hard drive space we expect to use in the environment. Oh, please use all lowercase letters. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, meant. All right, so now it's uh, setting up that, that little uh, loopback device for us. Now it doesn't... Uh, it's not going to do everything. Uh, we're, we're going to have to boot into the uh, Mint environment. This method actually takes longer to set up than it would be if we simply split the partition and just dumped everything onto the hard drive. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but again, as I mentioned, this allows us to preserve the uh, Windows file system as it is, and the file system is just going to get a new file. <laughs> ah, here we go. And now we have the opportunity to go ahead and reboot so we can take a look at Linux Mint and it will continue the installation from there. Of course, leave the uh, disk in the drive. Okay, and so now we're getting ready to, uh, now that we've posted, uh, it's time to go ahead and boot. So I'll just not touch the keys and let Mint 15 do what it needs to. And it starts beginning, uh, starting up with the environment. So we still have some more stuff to get from the CD, plus we're going to be... Uh, doing a little work in that uh, loopback device that, that we now have on the hard drive. Whoops, oh, we didn't quite detect the video perfectly, but that's alright. You can just click and drag on the top, see as it sees the little hand, turns into a little grabby, you know, just click and hold. Oh, left click, I should say. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of advantages to uh, installing it this way. If you have uh, to deal with uh, major updates, um, sometimes, on some occasions, they can... Uh, if Microsoft decides that there's this critical update, they push it, which changes the master boot record, and that overwrites, you know, say, uh, you know, Grub, which, uh, you know, you split the partition and you have <laughs> Grub sitting there, 
uh, offering to uh, go from one partition to the other for booting, and Windows overwrites that, you could basically make a mess of the system. Uh, the same thing is true, um, although it's a little rarer, I think, in Linux, you know, where suddenly we overwrite the master boot record for a master, uh, big update. But it can happen. It's possible. Here, uh, we, we have a little bit less danger, um, since we just have this as a file on the file system that we're mounting, and uh, so that the master boot record is still okay. Okay, guys, I went ahead and I fast forward a little bit. Uh, there's, there wasn't much uh, going on except watching the progress bar go from the left to the right. Now, it reached a point where it's time to download language packs because uh, Mint realizes that I am connected to a network, and so it does have access out to the public Internet. So it's taking advantage of that. Whoops, uh-oh. See my time going up there. <laughs> I think my ISP is getting a little tired of me downloading uh, Linux uh, distributions. That's got to be a lot of gigabytes. I've, I've never actually looked at it. Uh, here, here's a little tip. If you notice that your speed seems to be kind of variable from your uh, internet service provider, call them up and ask them if they've placed a governor on your account. They'll deny it, of course. You know, they'll never admit to have done this. But then after you call, you may notice that your internet connection speed suddenly goes up for about a month or two. And uh, then it'll they'll probably do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to keep calling them and say, guys, did you put on a governor? And they're like, no, nah, we wouldn't do that. And then it just gets faster. It's a totally amazing coincidence not to impugn the integrity of my internet service provider. But as Arsenio Hall used to say, things that make you go, hmm. All right, so we're just about done here. Uh, so it's normal for this uh, to take a little while. And... Linux Mint will do the courtesy of giving you this nice little slideshow uh, to entertain you with a little information about the system uh, while it does its uh, install. Good, and we should be just about ready to boot up into the Linux Mint environment. Mm hmm. And here we are. Here's our new boot manager. Well, I'm going to choose Linux Mint. Whoops. There we go. I have to make sure I was hitting the right keyboard. I've got a couple in front of me. <laughs> All right. So I'll just hit Enter for Mint. It's always a good sign to see that uh, Linux Mint... Uh, Icon set there and slowly get brighter. Ta-da! And here we are, Linux Mint. And as I said, in this case, we're running Linux Mint out of a file instead of running it out of a file system. Although the file appears to be a file system when it's mounted. And, of course, we have our uh, standard little welcome screen. You know, welcome to Mint. Here are all our great features. All right. Um, so, do do do. Come on, Mint. Are you in a good mood? It's probably time for a new mouse anyways. <clears throat> okay, so we have a fully functioning Mint installation, and uh, we're able to connect out to the public Internet, which is useful because I can see that we have, oh, plenty of updates. Uh... Keep in mind that uh, whichever uh, version of Linux Mint that you happen to choose to install, to uh, be sure to update it to uh, the current version. So uh, as time goes by from the release date of your ISO, more and more updates will build up. That first time you'll probably have a few to install ever after, it'll probably be a few here and there. And it's as easy as to update it as it would be for, you know, Windows does the same thing and alerts you, hey, oh, good updates, you know, would you like me to go ahead and install them? Okay, and uh, so and of course Linux Mint uh, is available here from this website. Um, let's see, do do do. Oh, <laughs> this website. What am I thinking? Uh, it comes up by default in the, uh, the little search uh, thing that they have going on with Google. So uh, we can. Uh, this is the uh, version of Mint that I'm using right here, which is uh, here we go. 64-bit Cinnamon is what you're seeing here now. All right, so let's boot into Windows and just make sure that everything is still working. I'll say restart. Okay, so we come back to our boot manager.
Always good to have a long password. One that you're going to remember, though. <laughs> I've, I've outsmarted myself before where I came up with really complicated passwords that I didn't remember later. <laughs> Many computers have been formatted here because I forgot the password. It's all my fault. Okay, so we have both Linux uh, Mint 15 and Windows 7 running on the same computer. Uh, whoops, oh, it's the first time I've ever run IE, so it's it's got all kinds of wonderful things to tell me about how great it is. Um, and then see here we can go to the uh, file system itself and it shows how much uh, space has been taken up and see Linux Mint lives all in this folder all of this is is Mint as far as uh, the computer is concerned so that still leaves the rest of the file system for Windows so that's uh, dual booting with Linux Mint using the uh, loopback uh, trick instead of uh, splitting the partition. Enjoy.